pray. Lord God, I just pray for your word to be exalted. Lord God, to be correct by my mouth and not of anything of the flesh. Lord, that we focus upon Jesus Christ and not man. And Lord, the truth that John has set forth us in the scriptures as we look today. And Lord God, I pray for Ron, if he's on his way, that yes, he be safe. Lord. And Lord, if he's fighting what he has trouble with, Lord God, he's got to put him away. Lord, he wants to grow, and he can't grow if he's not here. Lord, help us to grow here. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Lord, Amen. Thank you for Brenda joining us today. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 All right. John chapter 1. We're not going to be here long. <laughs> now, last week, we, I took you to Paul in Athens. And what we're focusing right now is there are people in dark. And I've been showing you how the light shone. There were people in Athens that had a statue, the unknown God of all the gods they had. And Paul walked up to it. He said, hey, this is wrong. So what we need to do is I need to show you God. And that's what we looked at. And when you're witnessing to people, you got people in darkness. That's right. Amen. And we're looking at illustrations. You may not be in Athens. There may not be a statue. But if you're dealing with people in darkness, you are revealing to them the light of Jesus, exactly what we're talking about. And that's what we're going to go through the next few examples that we have. But John 1, verse 8. He was not that light, John, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That's what we are. We are a witness of the light. Amen. Amen. That was not the true light, which light is every man that cometh into the world. Okay, so let's take our Bibles to Acts chapter 16. As we did last week in Roman. Yeah, Acts. Acts 16. Acts 16. And verse 25. Now we're looking at people who are in darkness. As we will deal with those people in our lifetime. And how do I show them the light of Jesus? Illustrations through the Bible. In Acts 16, 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Paul and Silas are in jail for the word of God. Oh, I got a bad dispensation. I'm in a bad way. Oh, I got... You're not in jail for the word of God. And they're still singing praises of God. They're still worshiping God in jail because of God. They are there. Amen. So they're singing. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. Now that's, that's God. And immediately all the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loose. That's God. That's, that's a miracle. The, 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 the bars on the doors of the prison open. And all the handcuffs go down. By an earthquake. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep. Well, he shouldn't have been sleeping in the first place. Yeah, he's supposed to be watching. But you know what? When we deal with people, they're asleep. They're in darkness. They're not awake. They're darkness. Darkness, you sleep. And seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, exposing that the prisoners had been fled. Now, already, in the Roman government, if you were a keeper of prison and anybody escaped, your life was going to be dead. And your family. Not just the prisoner. So this guy, he, he's going to commit suicide. The doors are open. He thinks everybody's gone. He thinks. So, Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. That's a miracle. That's right. I've been in the prison ministry since, uh, I can't remember how long. And I used to preach this every once in a while. i say, I'd read this story, and i say, How many of you are Christians here? And their hands would go up. I said, if all these doors open right now, I said, how many of you would take off out the front door? And the guys, and all their hands would go up. I said, you're not Christians. Oh, what? I said, here's a bunch of unsaved men. The doors are open. 
They are no longer under handcuffs and they're still sitting there. That's a miracle. That's God. Because if the prisons up here in Volusia County, if all the doors open up, they would be running. Yeah. Helicopters would be flying. The sheriff would be going crazy. So this is a miracle. And I think God's trying to get this prisoner, uh, this uh, warden, keeper, I think God's trying to get his attention. Yeah. Then he, this is the, the keeper, called for a light. Why would he call for a light? Because he's in darkness. It's dark. Well, how do you know all the doors are open if it's dark? He's going to look on these men. He's going to get the candle. They didn't have flashlight. He's going to go inside and make sure they're all there. But is not this a perfect illustration how we've been talking about darkness? This man's asleep. He's in darkness where he says, I need light. After Paul and Silas has been praying. And sprang in. And came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Now you think, oh, he's going to worship them. Well, I think it's all God's attention because yeah. God is definitely working all this. Yeah. And brought them out. He takes them out of the cell. Paul and Silas. And then says, sirs, respectfully. He's talking to prisoners. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, God has been working on this guy's heart. You're not going to have somebody from the playground or the, the parks and recs or the swimming pool. Very rarely you're going to have somebody who's in traffic over there. They're going to come walking over and say, hey, hey, people, yeah, what do you need? What must I do to be saved? I will fall over and you need to do CPR on me. If somebody were to come up to this Bible study right now and said, what do I need to be saved? God's been working on his heart. Somebody has been planting seed in him. So this guy comes up and he says, okay, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. There is no baptism. There is no church member. There is no come to my church. There is no Tootsie Roll. That guy walks in, I need to be saved. All right, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He was in darkness. He was asleep. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. I know they couldn't have videos back then or anything, but it's the word of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I'm sorry, movies are not going to work. Yeah. Especially if they're movies perverting the Bible. Mm -hmm. When you have a movie about Jesus, that's not what Jesus was like. So already you're starting off on the wrong foot. And they spake unto the word of God and all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. They were beaten and were baptized. Well, notice, salvation came first. Let me wash your stripes. Let me wash that blood and pus off your back, sirs. Then I was baptized. <coughs> the thief on the cross was never baptized. And Jesus said, Today thou shalt be in paradise. So baptism is not a mean salvation. But what did Paul and Silas, or is it Silas in this one? I already read it. Paul and Silas, what did they do for this man who was in darkness? Gave him the gospel. Gave him the word of God. That's light. And this guy took that light full force and said, Hey, I want to be saved. And we're baptized. He and all his straightway, his whole house. His whole family got saved. This is the time, you know, there's a sign up here. Oh, revival this weekend. Listen, a, a father, or husband of a household got saved. The family's not going to follow today. They're going to count him strange and weird, but here's a time that the whole family got saved with the father and the husband and the uncle. And look how much the light shines. That guy, he's in darkness. He's asleep. He needs a light. He says, what must I do to be saved? But believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He gets saved. And what's the next thing he does? He goes home to his family and says, look what I got. Listen to these guys. That's a means that, that is with the heart, with the heart man believes on the, on the salvation. That's what he has done. With the mouth confession is made on the salvation, he brought the word home to his family. That's the one who's saved. 
Oh, I said this prayer. Have you told anybody yet? No. Why not? With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confesses man unto salvation. That mouth ought to be speaking right away. That's light. He knew his family was in darkness, so he brought the light home. He, even before it's written, he has gone to all the world, his family, and preached the gospel using Paul and son. And it's okay to have, this guy's brand new, it's okay for God to say, hey, listen, I know you witnessed to me, but can you come home to my family? But you ought to grow, you ought to study the Bible so you can deal with somebody on your own. Hey, listen, I had times where I, I go to the pastor, pastor, you talk to my friend, can I have my friend come talk to you in your office? But I've grown out of that. I don't need the pastor's help when I'm witnessing. I have grown enough where I can deal with somebody, and I want to train people that do get saved, who do like Louise wants to grow. I want to train you so when you're dealing with somebody, you can say, all right, this is the, and then you can have part in that person's salvation to be where you trust Christ. Now, you get part if you send a guy to your pastor, but the thing is, all right, you want to send them to your pastor. I'm not mentioning no names, but what if you get to your pastor's office and he's on a vacation? He's on a trip. You don't know when your friend's going to die. You get to deal with it right there and then. You may not have your pastor to help you all the time. It's up to you. The Bible says you go in all the world, not just the pastor, evangelists, and missionaries. So here's a man that's in darkness. And he comes out into light. He's saved and his family. Now, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Again, we're studying darkness and coming to that light. Matthew chapter 4, verse 12. Now, here's a whole nation. Israel. They're God's people. They are the elite of the elite of the elite, elite, elite of all nations. God does not have his heart set on America, Germany, England, Africa, Asia, Japan, Russia. He has his heart and mind and soul on bond, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, respectively called Israel. And Israel is in a terrible condition when Jesus shows up. They've got leprosy, they're blind, they're deaf, they're maimed. They're just uh, devil-filled. The spiritual condition and the physical condition of Israel is horrible when Jesus shows up. Mm -hmm. It's even worse today. There are children that are in Israel right now carrying AK-7 AK to go into school. And one of their book bags may have a bomb in Israel, Jerusalem. You may go have a co hey, let's stop here and have a coffee in the Holy Land. And you might be sitting there with your family and a woman come walk in and pull a trigger. That's going on in the Middle East today. That's yeah, the condition of Israel. And so Matthew 4, 12. When Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is on the sea coast, the Mediterranean. And the borders of Zebulun and Nephthali, two tribes, that it may be fulfilled, which is spoken by Isaiah, the prophet saying, The land of Zebulun, and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness, there's Israel's condition, saw great light. There's Jesus. How do I know Jesus is real? There is two tribes. The, the people of Zebulun, the people of Nephitali. Two tribes out of the twelve tribes, thirteen counting Levi, that saw Jesus Christ amongst the whole nation. And when the Bible lays out, Isaiah says that the dark in Israel, here comes your light and it's Jesus Christ. And that's what we've been studying in John chapter 1. Now, I just did yesterday... Because I'm doing a series on hymns. The biblical truth of our hymns. You are not to sing Holy Night as a Christian. It says, radiant beams that came from Jesus' face. Jesus did not glow. He did not have a halo. When you see their pictures, they got a glowing. That's not alien activity. 
in the Bible. And I, I want to be clean. If Jesus glowed, the birth canal would have been really lit up. But I'm trying to be clean. There was no glowing of Jesus. You see, when they say the light of Jesus, they take it literal. Oh, wait a minute, i got to plug Jesus in. He's, he's starting to die. His bars are going, no, no, no. The light is, do you know anything about God? What we read in Acts last week. Well, there's an unknown God. Well, that God created everything. Really? Yeah? Okay, there's a little light. That God made one blood of all nations. Okay, that's interesting. There's more light. That God is Jesus Christ. Ooh, I want to hear about him. Well, that God was resurrected by God after being dead for three days and three nights. <laughs> I don't know. You hear that, man? <laughs> oh, that guy, he's such a... Tell us more. I believe. And those are the three characteristics of people by the light. There are people who turned off the light by mocking. There are people like, okay, I got it. I don't got it. need more help. And then there are people, I receive it. Boom. And I guarantee those people, when we finished Acts last week, I guarantee they went off and told others. Yeah, you're taking your light that you got from God, and you're giving it out to others. And the three responses of your light of Jesus Christ to a darkened world is mockery. Well, let me hear more. All right. But few will say all right. So Israel was in darkness. From Malachi to Matthew 4, to, to, the, to, the, to the book of Malachi, to now, 400 years, silence. From Malachi to Matthew, 400 years, Israel's all messed up. The light. Let's go back to mom. Okay. Light. Jesus. Yep. Yep, no problem. You have a good day now. Have a good day, Brenda. Nice to meet you, Brenda. We're here every Wednesday, Lord willing, at 11, okay? If you want to come again. Bring your mom. Yeah, bring mom. Next Wednesday at 11. So the light in darkness is Jesus Christ. Satan will keep you in darkness. And again, it could not be John the Baptist. Back to John, verse 8, John 1, 8. Now, John come, but he's the forerunner. He's not that light, John 1, 8. That light is Jesus Christ by Matthew 4. He was not that light, talking about John, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, that light is every man that cometh into the world, that light that's not John, but Jesus Christ. Now we move on. Woohoo, another verse. He was in the world, the light, Jesus. And the world was made by him. Now don't you see why we went through the creation, Genesis 1. John just backed up. Well, Let's, let's say let's say we had a Bible study here, you know, he was in the big word, it was in the beginning, it was with God, the same was beginning, and all things were made by him, and someone sat here and said, I don't believe that. We're evolution. Or, you know, we had a, the world's a turtle on the back of the world is flat, or whatever the thing is. And you say you don't believe it, God the Bible says he was in the world. What's the world? Here we are. And the world was made by him. Just a frank out statement that that light who is Jesus, who is the Word, is Creator, and we're here by the crea creation and not by accident. So you see the importance? You get a guy who does not believe in creation. You believe in, we, are, we come from monkeys and all that? Yes, I do. Well, Jesus Christ suffered and died for your sin. Really? Would you like to say this prayer? Oh, sure. You're not saved. You will not be saved. Until you acknowledge that Jesus is the Creator, That's that right. the Creator is God, and Hebrews 11 says you must believe God who God is. Plain and simple. And the world knew Him not. Boy, is that ever so today. Jesus was the Creator. He's the one that signified and set up the Levitical priesthood. He's the one that made Moses. <laughs> 
And they had really some idea of who he was, but they didn't have the full potential. Because if they really knew that that was God manifesting the flesh, they would not have put him on the cross. And yet prophecy said they would put him on the cross. If they really believed Jesus was it, they would take in Jesus all of a sudden and say, Jesus, yes, we know you're God. Good. But they didn't. We know that certain prophecies must be fulfilled about you. Believe in who you are, which they didn't. Can you help us fulfill those prophecies, but still love us? They never did that. Yeah, triumphal entry. Hosanna, Hosanna, he's going to take away the Roman government, and we're going to have victory. That's what that was all about. Here comes their king on the ass, but he's going to get rid of the Roman government. Well, he's not here to save us. We're going to have our land, but we're still going to live in sin. And then later on, when he realized that he wasn't going to conquer the Roman government, crucify him. Get him out. Crucify him, will you? Crucify him. We don't want him. So, in John 1.10, we're not going to go back, but remembers our study with Genesis 1. That is Jesus, the creator of the creation. And when we saw the word was in the beginning, when God said, let there be... God said, God said, God said, the verbal air that came out of God's mouth is Jesus Christ. So when God said, let there be light, let there be a world, that's where this thing is saying, and the world was made by him, by the voice of God. Now, how powerful is that voice of God? One day, we may be dead. That's a possibility. Maybe right now, as we're studying the Bible, we may one day hear a voice. Come up hither. We're gone. No fighting, no discussion, no argument. That's how powerful the voice of God is. At that rapture, those that remain are going to be caught up together with those that are died and sleep. The voice of God is going to wake the dead. And what the world calls it is a, a, a zombie apocalypse. Well, you ain't going to see me walking around dead because I'm going to go right to the clouds if I'm dead. If I'm alive, I'm going to go right to the clouds and the world's not even going to see it. Amen. If the rapture would happen right now, it'd be just one moment. People are, ah, there's those idiots over there. There's those phony baloney. And then, hey, did you see them leave? No. Where'd they go? Hey, their bag is there. Let's go see if they got money in it. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Have it. Keys will be in my pocket. Take the car. I'm in glory. How am I in glory? By the voice of God. Amen. How am I saved? The voice of God said on that cross, it is finished. Don't add anything else to it. How am I saved? By the word of God. The inspiration. Yeah, man wrote it. But the Holy Spirit told them what to write. That's light. That's the creator. The creator God was in the world. And the world was created. And the world had no idea who he was. Now you got to wonder, and, and I'm speculating here, so let me say that. We knew he was born in the manger. We knew animals were supposed to be there, but we had no idea if the animals were there. We don't know that. But if there were angels in, I mean, if there were animals in that area, you would think in the middle of the night while Joseph and Mary fell asleep, you wanted the animals, well, hey, there he is. Because animals in the Bible have more contact with God than man. Mm -hmm. Donkey, I want you to speak to Baal. I want you to give Baal a message. That moment that donkey could speak, he could have done anything with that voice. Hey, God, look at me. <laughs> Baal, wow. why did you beat me? Because there's an angel of the Lord right there. Ravens, I want you to go get some food wherever you get it. I want you to go feed Elijah. Hmm, this cake is good. No, give it. Dove, when you go out of that ark, I want you to go get that olive leaf, a type of the Holy Spirit, that later on the Holy Spirit will come down as a dove. No, not the maple leaf. He doesn't have to do that. No, not the poison ice. No, he didn't have to do that for the dove. The dove said, okay, there's the olive leaf, and brought it. Now, Jesus walked up to a, an ass of the colt, never been written, he says, carry me into Jerusalem. That thing, not buck him off. And I've been told by donkey herders, whatever you want to call it, 
You do not get on an ass that's never been broken, because even the ass has been broken. It will fuck you up. It will fuck you up. Amen. Tracy had a thing with a goat one time. I don't know if it's the same thing, but... She... She... A ram. Oh, now, see, lot. animals listen more to, to God than man. I'm surprised about why God didn't die for animals. A dog more so. Yes, I know. And you got to wonder, because Jesus was slept out in the mountains. He would pray all night. He didn't live in the house. He didn't sleep on the bed, he said. He wonder if the animals just walked up to him, like a, you know, down in California, Florida, <laughs> theme park. He wanted the animals would go up to him, like Snow White, and say, can I carry you? Bring or their little or babies. Or, or snuggle up with them and keep them warm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know? He was God. He could talk to them. Amen. Snow White could have had all the, you know, all the animals, straight and all that. How do you know that's not what they did with, with God, Jesus Christ? There he is. Like they do with Adam. And Jesus is the second Adam. Now, that's all speculation. I don't know. But man, the creation, had no idea who that man was. 100% God, 100% man. And in 2018, there's the Jehovah Witnesses who still don't know who that man is. Hmm. And then you got the Catholic Church. You got the Catholic Church that say, well, Mary is the mother of God. No. He absolutely not. He was already God before he was in her. So, That's right. man does not because know. She just provided the flesh. In she their provided. darkness, they do not know who the Creator is. I do, because God's given me light. Amen. And we read a couple of weeks ago that that fact is when you look to the, to the sky and you're young, you look up there and you're in a tribe in the middle of some nation somewhere where there's no electricity, no worldly influence. You look up in the sky and say, there's this almighty being that did that. That's light. And when you go to a college or a public school system in the great United States of America, God bless America, those lights are getting turned off. Because kiddies look. You see monkey man. You see the Big Bang. You see the rock stands up. This speaks about our ancestors. And look here. In Texas, there's a riverbed. Look at the dinosaur tracks. Don't look over there. There's man tracks over there, but don't look at that. That's by accident. What's that ever root in the sand over there? That's, that's by accident. How come these teeth of this monkey have been filed? And how come that's two bones? of two different beings. It's a lie. So today, let's look at Romans chapter 1. And we're back to the creation again. <laughs> Why is God back on the creation in Romans 1.19? Again, as is studying, help us all grow. Help Louise grow as now she is witnessing to people. Right. That when she comes to the fact, when she's dealing with somebody, I don't believe God created. I don't believe it. You can't go no further. Yep. Amen. you got to get them to acknowledge God. But the, the thing is, there are people out there, <coughs> Christians, <coughs> who are dealing with people who don't believe in God, have, no, and they'll say, well, say this prayer. Salvation's easy, but you got to know who God is. So Romans 1, 19, I lost my train of thought there, sorry. Sometimes it's real. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has showed it unto them. We're talking about lost people. I'm not talking about saved people. Like I say, when I was young, me and my friend Kevin used to sacrifice our forms to God, never reading the Bible, never realizing that there were animal sacrifices. How did I know that? God implanted that there was a sacrifice. I don't know if earth forms have blood, but instinctively there had to have been a blood. I never sacrificed turnips or tomatoes. I would never suffer a tomato. Or a potato, never do that. Like Cain did. How come I didn't follow the ways of Cain? How come I went the way of Abel, blood, if a perform has blood? Rachel, look up for me, performs have blood. 
See, we've already seen in John, we've already seen, God has planted in us with birth. There's a God. And the nation of Israel were void of believing that. They were taught out of it by the priests, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the scribes taught them out of it. Because that which was known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. All right, now everybody look over here. You see this oxygen? You can't see it. All right? What is oxygen picture? God. Have you ever seen God? No, He's a spirit. Can't see it? You can't see God. See this table? I can see this table. I can touch this Jesus, that table. And yet the disciples wrote unto us. John wrote unto us. We saw him. We heard him. And with our hands beheld Jesus. God. Some things you don't see, that's God. Some things you do see, that's Jesus. They're both one. So when we look at creation, that, that scientist that looks in that, in that microscope, he's supposed to see God. Booker T. Washington, the great man with the peanut and the other beans. How was he so successful on all the inventions of the soybean and the peanut? Because he loved God, he was saved, he prayed to God. He said, God, what can I do with this bean? And God answered. Uh, God, uh, uh, Pastor, God, I love you, I'm saved. What can I do to get rid of infection? And I forget how he found the mold. I, I, think, I think it's a silly story. But he found mold and he turned that into penicillin. You have today, you have insulin for diabetics. You know, Lord, what, what can I do to help them? Okay, God, guess what? I'm going to give you the credit. I am not going to um, put a patent on that. I'm not patenting my uh, insulin. So when you go to the store, you can buy it for $10 and not $46. That's the difference. A him not patent. You, if he would have patented it, you would pay $1,000. A lot of your big medicines are patented. I believe that uh, insulin is not because he wanted the common people to get it. Those scientists are supposed to look in their telescopes and see God, not... American government is spending our money to go find water on another planet. Who cares? You need you, you need homeless vets need water and a home. Yeah. You thank the Lord that like metformin and glipizide are free. And are free. Amen. Yeah, my metformin is free. I mean, you have insurance or not? You go to the pharmacy. It's free to get rid of and and, and um, amoxicillin. It's free. But the man with the degree, you have to pay a hundred bucks if you don't have insurance. Right. That's not free. But the hypocritical, oh, you know, don't get me in on that. Verse 21, because that, here we go, we've already discussed this verse, because that when they knew God, lost. All right, let me ask you a question. You got an unsaved man, he's working on his car, his wrench slips off, he cracks his knuckle on the spark plug, Buddha. No, that's not what he said. Uh, Allah. Well, what's the two things? He uses Jesus Christ in a, in a form that's not proper and right. Or God, water damn it. And the whole world does that. I know. They don't say their God's name. God becomes the curse when your knuckles are bleeding. Jesus Christ becomes the curse because the kids in the classroom are not listening. Why? Because in your heart you know there is a God. And when you stand before the great white throne judgment, and I never knew. Okay, let's play back all the GDs, and let's play back all my son's names that were mentioned by you, but not in good context, where the Bible says, one of the commands, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. That's right. Let's take a look at that violation commandment. So you see, the fact is, when you got, it, it, it'd be funny, and I laugh when you deal with somebody, and they're, they're going to be your friend, somebody that you work with, or, or come around, and you'll say, "Well, I don't believe in God, do you?" Right? And then you'll hear them cuss God's name, and you'll be, like, 
I just heard you. And usually, I used to do it as a job I had, and if I heard somebody use Jesus' name, and I would say, you want, are we praying now? And I'd get them so upset. What you do you mean? do it without even realizing they're doing it. I know. And why is that in you? We never curse the Pope when right. we get upset. Like the ladies across from us at the flea market Friday, it was OMG. They'd say OMG, or they'd say, oh my God. All day long, you're kidding. Yeah. And like Rachel tried to give them a track. They took a track, but they were like not interested in our table like all day long. But they would say, "Oh my God!" and "OMG!" all day long. OMZ. Oh my Zeus. Well, maybe that trap will, you know, make a difference. Maybe so, no. because that when they knew God, <laughs> they glorify Him not as God. See my monkey chart. See how good I am. Do you see my degrees on the wall? Do you see my education? Do you see my science? Do you see... All right. See, now they're giving credit not to a creator. That's not someone you say, all right, would you like to say this prayer? you got a lot of work to do with them. you got a lot of prayer to do with them. And the more educated they are, the less likely they're going to get saved. Like Je It's like Jehovah. The more they're into the Jehovah Witness movement... Just throw a couple of insults at them, scripture-wise, and walk away. So because... Uh, because that when they knew God, they glorify Him not as God, neither were thankful. You cannot pray and you cannot thank God in the public school system. But you can get on your prayer road. Now, you can pray in the public school system. You're at the, here I am at the lunch counter. You can pray. Here's my lunch. You don't have to make a show. Jesus said don't make a show. There's no problem with prayer in the public school system. Just don't make a show. You don't have to go down before all the television cameras that you, you made this stupid line with a stupid ball and get down on your knees where they tell you it's wrong to do it and they make a big show where I've been offended. No, you can carry that ball across anything. <laughs> to your point. But see, they do it for show so that everybody will recognize it and get the glory. That's not it. I have for the last two weeks now been in classrooms with Tessa, and I guarantee in those classrooms I have prayed enough time for questions and answers, and no one ever heard me. If you look at my book, I wrote a certain page, God help me. Lord, can I do this? Lord, help me. I'm not supposed to mention religion. But I did. But no one knew. Oh, I see. Thankful. Again, I use this illustration all the time. George Washington has given us one time in a year to thank God, the Creator, and who gave us this nation under the pilgrims. Will you hurry up and eat? Get that stuff. I gotta go camp out at, at the Best Buy so I can get that stupid TV. <laughs> They ruin the thankful day. No, that's it. That's all because no. they're not Serial thankful things, because right? they need to go get something. They're not. They just thank God at Thanksgiving for all He's blessed them with. But I need. I gotta go and. Well, I all right. Uh, let's everyone say grace, say grace around the table. We may say grace. I gotta go to work to get those idiots so they can buy all those stupid things. And then December twenty fifth, when they open the present, it's not what they wanted. They're not thankful. You ever want, if you've you got YouTube, if everyone wants to see YouTube videos, look up children who did not get what they wanted on Christmas and watch the, it's just comical how they throw a complete tantrum tantrum, where I see one kid on the video throw the Christmas tree right out the window because he didn't get what he wanted. Another one is the parents joke and say they, sorry, the night, the day after, yeah. trick or treating. Oh, I'm sorry, mom and dad, while we were sorting out your candy, we ate it all. They go... These kids go crazy. But became vain in their imagination. So it's the head. Head. Education is science is head. Religion is head. Salvation is heart. Amen. It's not what you think. And a lot of people, you deal with people. Well, I don't think. That's your problem. <gasps> you got a hole between your brain. Some of it may have leaked out. There's nowhere for your heart to leak out. And their foolish heart was darkened. There's where we are. 
So you get somebody like this, guess what? They've had light when they were born and grew up as a child. They went the other way away from God. They became dark. Last week we looked at a bunch of people from Athens. At the end of that chapter, there were people that got saved. They were in dark. We have all these gods. We have all these goddesses. We listen to Paul. We believe God. We have light. And then there were some people who said that Paul spoke about the resurrection. They're listening. Light's coming. They're listening. Wow, that's God. Wow, great, great, great. Resurrection of the dead. Ha, 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 ha. Light goes out. And they're back in there. Goddesses and gods and poetry and all the other nonsense that's taught in the public school system, Homer, and I don't even know what the other mess is. I had to take, I forget what, in, in junior high, I mythology. had to take mythology. One year I had to take, I had to take Greek mythology, and the that's next the year I had to take Roman. Children out of the real God do these false yeah. gods. Right? But you can't and mention God the Father. Every system across the United States has curriculum that you have to study mythology. So verse 22, professing themselves, professing themselves, professors, look how God used that word. To be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of uncorruptible God, that's my God, into an image like the corruptible man and bird, four-footed beast, and creepy things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart, the desire of their own bodies between themselves. So there are people, here they are, they started off in life. There's a God. They turned away from God, and God got to the point and says, I'm done with you. The nation of Israel, God told Jeremiah at one point, he said, don't even pray for them. And like I said, the more educated they are, the more they're away from God. Uh, you witness, don't try it. I'm not saying don't witness, but most cases, most people are religion. Now, there are Catholic priests, there are Catholic nuns that got saved by the true Jesus Christ. And God is using them in ministries now in the, trying to get the people out of the Catholic Church. So I'm not saying... Same thing with rabbis, too. And I'm not yeah. saying that it's completely impossible. There's some rabbis. So... God does reveal Himself to men. We can see God's creation open your eyeballs. How did that tree get here? Alright? Why doesn't any trees grow upside down? You plant a seed in the garden. Why doesn't it go the other way? It can't say, I see light. It's in darkness. How does that seed know which way to go? Gravity. Explain gravity. Nobody can. Okay? The, even the Bible says, I think it's Job or Jeremiah, how the wombs grow inside of a, a woman's womb. The wombs? I mean, the bones. And then you look at the whole pregnancy thing. That's not Our accident. Animal. How one cell is a heart and one cell turns into an eye. And so in verse 120, you've got the atom, you've got microscopes. In 1897, the first electron was discovered. God knew it was there the whole time. Science finally caught up. It was in the Bible. God reveals His creation and Himself by the creation. Now, the glory of God is not given by man. It's given to His creation. Nice monkey. Monkeys are wonderful. God created the monkeys. That's my monkey's uncle. No. A fish that got out of the water and started walking. Yes, it happens. But they did not become man. Man's imagination became vain, empty, nothing, no value. Genesis 6.5. Going all the way back to Genesis again. Genesis 6.5. Imagination. You make your own life dark when it comes to God by saying no, something else. You see a man that is lost and has been witnessed to, has been given gospel tracts, has been given scripture, and he's still lost. That is his own fault, not God's. How can God, that guy said, how can God send people to hell? Because you won't listen. You won't believe. 
It's not God's fault. God's long-suffering, for God so loved the world. He done his part. In Genesis 6, 5, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that the, the every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's before the flood. An evil imagination, a religion of your thoughts can kill you and send you to hell. Now what is evil imagination? Guns. Death. Torture. Mass destruction. War. Extermination. Crime. Pornography. Revenge. Death. Retaliation. Conflict. That's man's imagination. All right? Genesis 8, 21, floods over. Earth is dry. Noah comes out of the ark. Everything. Oh, look how wonderful. Smell that air. No more people. There's eight people coming out of the ark. That's it. Only eight people are out of that ark. Everybody else has died. And the animals are coming out. 8, 21, Genesis. God speaks to Noah. Noah builds an altar. Thing. Thank you, God, that, that, that ark stunk. <laughs> We're out of it. We're on our land. It's dry ground. Wow, look at the trees again. Look how beautiful it is. God is with us. My family is saved. And the Lord smelled the sweet Savior. The Lord can smell. I will not again curse the ground anymore, anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart. Oh, there's heart. So the heart is wicked. Jeremiah says, above all things. Jesus said, out of the heart comes murder, adultery, fornication, theft, and he goes on with a long list. So your mind and heart. How do you change before we finish this verse? You must be born again. Because your first birth is terrible. It's of sin, Adam. For a man's heart is evil from his youth. So the flood didn't change anything. Okay? The day I got saved, April 21st, 1987, did not change who I am. If you cut me off in traffic, I will show you how much of a sinner imagination I got. <laughs> Though I'm born again and saved, this old flesh, 1 John 1, 9, it's because his old flesh still sins. No matter what that guy said, he never sinned. You're lying. You're a sinner. Right, right. Now, the day that we're raptured, at that moment now, we are perfect and no more problem. We get judged for the stuff we've done. And we get the new body. We get everything like that. Then we're perfectly fine. Then our hearts are clean. Probably won't have, I don't know, we'll have imaginations in heaven or anything like that. But then... But can a Christian sin? Absolutely. So we'll, do, we'll close right there. We're going to pick up back on this subject. And we're going to pick up your heart next week, Lord willing. That little thing, you know, they draw the heart, oh, I love you. When we get done, when we get with that, when we get done with that study, you'll say that's anything but love. That symbol. Well, well, this is the idea of the heart, because you know what? We're going to tell you what the heart is. <laughs> you may be just showing that you're unfaithful. It's, it's wicked. Lord God, I just pray for Brenda, Lord. Sweetheart. Lord, I don't know what her condition is, but Lord, I pray for her and her mother. And I would assume that nurse's aide that would help her or counsel her, Lord God. And thank you for bringing her. And Lord, this shows that you do are looking upon us. Lord, I pray for Ron. Keep working on his heart and Clint with the Bible. And Lord, may this study, Lord God, be out in the internet in the Netherlands and in Indonesia and in all the places of the world, Lord. And Lord, this, there are people in darkness and you show them the light. And Lord, if they reject that light, they're back in darkness. And it's not your fault. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen.